It is party time, Mom. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show. It is Monday, and it feels like it 100%. We are in the Mothership Studio 22, the Puppet Master Mark, and let's love Brandon at the helm, driving us into the nether regions of all things insanity in the hot seat today. My good friend, former Green Beret and founder and CEO of Alpha Elite Performance. You've heard me talk about him before. Travis Wilson is here. Welcome. Thank you. To thank the you, thank show. you. I, uh, I've been trying to get you on here forever, but... You don't live here, so yeah. you came for the Cowboys game. I did, <laughs> and the Rangers game. Double no, you header. did it all. Double header yesterday. I'm you pretty exhausted. Uh, my gut and my liver are yeah. also pretty exhausted. I meant to ask well. you before we started if you drank yesterday, because sometimes you're weird that way. You don't. You may not drink. We drank. Uh, we drank girly drinks. Okay. Um, there were some other Green Berets that I was with, so we had some hard drinks as well. But I then you. you just started mixing everything, and then you just start drinking everything. Yeah. So I ended up drinking. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel it. I had white wine. I feel very spritzed. It seems yeah. fitting. Chad. Yeah, that's it does. I was we sat around the house yesterday yeah. watching football, and I hate to admit it. I hate to admit it that I was even watching football. I, it was on. I'll put it that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, but no, I know you're at the game anyway. I uh, let's talk. All right, let's do it. Let's talk. I want to first of all. I'm sweating. You are. And I want to tell everybody later on why I'm sweating. Yeah. You've heard me talk about Alpha Elite Performance. It, 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 it's Travis's incredible supplement company. I, I was happy to, uh, you know, affiliate partner with them a, a while back. And uh, you and I met in Vegas. We did. You you were booping people's noses and stuff. Their cameras. Was, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was I was in the lobby of some hotel there. The Aria or something like yeah, that. Yeah. And, and somebody came up to me and was talking and you had been talking to them. And yeah. So then CJ, she said, oh, I got this great couple from California. And they asked me, like, where, do, where, do, where should we move? We're moving to Texas. Yeah. And y'all moved right there across yeah. the lake from where her family's place yep. is. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We moved there to uh, – And I was like, I know that dude. Yep. And his wife, Emily. I know those guys. Yeah. So it's small a small world. world. It Weird is. Weird how that came around. I didn't even know who the heck you were in Vegas. I was just <laughs> like, oh, great. It's another cowboy walking around with a guitar on his back. Usually when I'm in Vegas, I don't know who I am either. Yeah. It's how it works out that <laughs> right. way. Right, yeah. So yeah. – I, you know, I always say, you know, you know, the Marines are always Marines, we, but in the army, Green Berets, it's okay to say former Green Beret. Yeah. Do, I mean, are y'all, what, how did y'all community communicate that? Yeah. No, once a Green Beret, always a Green always, Beret. Yeah, yeah. I would imagine that somebody in the Navy who, you know, once a Navy cook, always a Navy cook. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you know, it is what it is, you know, but, uh, you know, I earned the right to wear the Green Beret and, yeah. uh, it's really an award. The the Green Beret is in yeah. the long tab. So um, yeah, once a Green Beret, always a Green Beret. We um, yesterday, of course, was was the twenty first anniversary of nine eleven. <clears throat> Did you decide to go in the military based off of nine eleven? Was that an influence for you or no? I uh, I graduated high school in nineteen ninety three. Went to a military academy. Dropped out like an idiot. Uh, and joined the military out of uh, leaving that military academy. So Yeah, so you were way earlier than me. Yeah, 1995, yeah. I was in the service. And then I actually got out to go back, and I went to Boise State. Uh, left Boise State when the Iraq Wars kicked off, and uh, I didn't want to miss any of that. Um, the only reason why I didn't deploy when 9-11 happened was our my unit in Alaska, the first of the 501st, mm-hmm. uh, we got tasked with guarding the, the oil pipeline up there. And I was just like... This is not what I want to do. I want to go to Afghanistan. And I figured that was going to be over in a second. You know, we were going to drop some bombs. So yeah, that's when I got out and uh, went back to school. Everybody always thinks that they can go in there and do something quick in Afghanistan. The Russians learned hard way. They sure they did. They can't do that. <laughs> yeah. So we've done the same thing. They're learning so. a, the hard way again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. The uh, Did you always just know Army? Was that the deal? No. My father was Air Force Pararescue. He was a special operations guy in the Air Force uh, and then also a physician assistant later on. Um, but that guy sang ballads, little stanzas of the Ballad of the Green Berets uh, to me. Pin silver wings on my son chest, make him one of America's best. Yeah. Uh, and so that just resonated with me my whole life. But I wanted to be Air Force Pararescue. It was during the Clinton administration. I had surgery on my knee. Uh, the Air Force said, sorry, we don't want you. You had surgery on your knee. Go across the hall to the Army. It made really? absolutely zero sense because the Army's like, if you want to abuse your body more, come on. <laughs> so I was like... <laughs> And these days, like, what? obviously the Army, all the military branches are having a hard time recruiting right now. They're yeah. not meeting quotas. And even the folks they get, uh, you know, I texted you the other day, and I said, what's the deal on this remedial thing? Is that new deal? And you're like, no, they've always taken pieces of shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, the military's always just kind of taking who they can get. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of them, 
say that they don't have a quota to meet, but I know firsthand that they've got a quota that they need to meet. And and sometimes they screw up and take the wrong people. Yeah. Uh, it, it happened a lot during the the height of the Iraq War when when standards were lowered. Um, people would argue with me that the recruiting standards weren't lowered, but they were. People would argue with me that the standards for special operations acceptance and things like that weren't lowered, but they were. Um, but, you know, you got little spots you got to fill. So I mean, I got to think they'll be in special forces. You, you got to, you look at it with a certain standard and, and you're dis- you got to be disappointed with Man. some of the other things that you see. Yeah. Well, I'll just say that the standards and and I know that a lot of people uh, agree with me, but the standards have been lowered yeah. um, and it is upsetting to see that um, you won't hear about them. And, and a lot of the times, uh, guys within that particular branch or, or uh, service don't hear about them either. It comes from the higher echelon of people that, like for instance, we had to take surveys when I was in active duty. Should women be allowed in combat arms MOSs? Yeah, and they are. They're flying Apaches and things like that. But should they more, you know, be added into special operations? Right. And women have always been in special operations. And I say, if you can, you know cut it then you should be able to make it but 99 percent of the guys that i know all said no they shouldn't be you know like there's just things that you know odas work a little different we're all men on a 12 men on on an oda special operations detachment alpha and throwing a lady in there is going to kind of screw things up when you're out there you know so see my thing there and i've said it in recent weeks on this show is if you would you take an army, let's just use the army, would you take a military that's all women? Well, unless they're Amazons, you know. Yeah, well, then, then I, my thing is no, you wouldn't. No, and then they've kind of already proven that uh, with a all-infantry uh, platoon of women, uh, and they just got annihilated. Yeah. So, And no offense to them. Uh, I don't now, know where they were at. There's a lot of girls out there that kick my ass. I mean, there's I, no question about it. But. I have an affiliate with Alpha Leap Performance who is a female ranger. Um, I know some women who are in CAG, special, you know, Delta Force, uh, it, you know, or former and, uh, you know, women, there are some amazing women out there that I would absolutely take on, yeah. you know, missions and stuff like that. My fear is I'm 265 pounds, six foot three with all that kit. I get really heavy. Can you pull me out? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's a good point. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of good points that could be I made. Can't. I just to be on record. I could not pull you. And out. I know a lot of men that couldn't either. I could but, not pull you out butt naked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. I've tried. Oh, uh, that would be embarrassing. <laughs> You've tried. <laughs> We've been drunk in a pool. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah it was a great time. But, Weird. Uh, but you, you had a, you had an accident. I did. You jumped out of an airplane. I did. What'd you do? Just forget the parachute? No, I brought it with me. Uh, and I, <laughs> I pulled it and, uh, it, it was, I was coming in on final and, night dust ever or whatever it was in training for in preparation for uh a trip to iraq another trip to iraq and uh the right side of my canopy just decided that it didn't want to work yeah it was a night jump so i couldn't see it but i heard it immediately started spinning to the right started climbing my left risers and the next thing you know uh you know i ate i ate i was a dirt dart i ate the ground and uh but i lived and but i've had 13 surgeries since and my god uh you know, and hit my head pretty hard. On yeah. A, you know, a few times actually, but but that was the big one. So yeah. you look at you look at what's going on, and again, commemorate nine eleven yesterday. It's weird how things have changed, right? So you, you we talk about the day after how everybody was unified, and yeah, we you know we were under the the belief that we were under attack from you know radical terrorists and all this kind of stuff. But then twenty one years later, you post a never forget meme on your social media and everybody's got a conspiracy theory right the thing just starts unrolling is that more of a sign of people are waking up to a certain reality that maybe we all need to wake up to but in your opinion or is it just something that we just we just are choosing to believe whatever conspiracy theory comes along i mean it just things have changed right yeah we went from oh we we're consolidated and unified against a certain enemy to now we're like we are the enemy yeah Right. It's a weird change in America. It, it's, it's it's absolutely crazy. Uh, and and to be clear, I I got some conspiracy theories myself. Right. right. And yeah. one of them yesterday was like the day before Donald Rumsfeld had you know had said made a statement that there was two point three trillion dollars that went missing from the Pentagon. Right. And then the next day, nine eleven happened. I think that's a bogus conspiracy theory. Um, do I think that this was all made up? I have no idea. I know that it happened, yeah. and that this nation lost three thousand plus Americans, great Americans. Yeah. Uh, and 
on the 12th, we as a nation came together. And I wish we would have stayed like that, but it didn't take long before, you know, Americans hate Muslims and all. It just started to snowball into where we're at now. And, and it sucks. It really does suck because we are the greatest nation on the planet. Yeah. And the 12th proved that. And, and I wish that we, we were there. Conspiracy theories, I try not to get into, involved in those. And I have a lot of people that hit me up uh, with their thoughts and ideas and shit that they're... Am I allowed to cuss? Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, and the stuff that they read. Uh, you know, I, I never thought about any of that. I was just always told, this is where you're going to go. This is what you're going to do. This is who you're going to kill, take out, whatever, capture. And uh, and that's what I did. So yeah. you try not to get wrapped up in the conspiracy stuff. I, I still try not to get wrapped up in that because I think it'll drive you nuts. You were, you know, and another thing, so many topics we're going to get to in this show, but it, it, we I was at your house a couple weeks ago, and um, we were talking about this real pandemic of PTSD and, and, and veterans that are committing suicide, and, and you and I are both actively involved. You're with the Green Beret Foundation and numerous other things. We've done various events together or other organizations as well and um you've seen some things you've done some things you've lived through some things but you're you you kind of handle all of this stuff that you've seen and done that pts doesn't hit you as hard right it, or it doesn't i mean how does that differentiate why does so why are some people dealing with that some people are not dealing with that is everybody dealing with it i mean how should we who look in as concerned people with no experience with that, how yeah. should we see this and how, would you, how should we be concerned about it accurately? You know, there, there's a number of different factors. I think we're all kind of wired differently, you yeah. know? I went through some shit, uh, but, but mine stemmed from losing a father, breaking my back, um, thinking I was gonna lose my career, going through a second divorce, losing that family, you know, and that, all of that, and, and losing buddies, uh, all at the same time. And all of that really weighed in on me. And at one point, you know, I thought, how easy would it be to just end it all right now, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, and I think that was my, you know, it lasted about a week. Uh, but after that, you know, it, we're just all wired differently. It, none of the stuff that I've seen or done has really um, been a factor. Um, I, there is some PTS within my brain, but I think yeah. that's natural from the, the, yeah. the traumas, if you will, that, that I've seen and witnessed and done. Um, but they, some guys, gals are just wired differently. And, and, you know, I think that just comes down into a science that I can't really explain. Uh, how should we look at it on the outside looking in, you know, know that there are guys that are suffering, gals that are suffering and it sucks because they yeah. really are. And there's, I mean, it, there's proof. There's the average of 22 people, veterans committing suicide daily. Why, why, what, like, why aren't we attacking that? Uh, like we would, you know, you know, sending money to Ukraine. You know yeah, what I mean? Hundred um, percent. So, but there's also guys that are full of shit, and, and I'll call them out. Uh, I've seen it. I've witnessed it. I can't stand the people that that use that as a crutch to get, you know, their disability rating and stuff like that. Because people do do that. Yeah. Um, it, it blows my mind that that they're given a hundred percent disability in a in a handicap placard and work out and and. You know, they're in great shape, but yet they'll go park in the handicap. <laughs> I'm just calling these motherfuckers out, you know. <sighs> it gets me lit, bro. Somebody's got to. Gets me lit, and I'm a veteran, so I'm allowed. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I love all our veterans, and if they have any issues, like, there is always somebody there. There's no yeah. reason to, to commit suicide, and, and you're not only hurting yourself, but you're hurting that family and your friends and us, that you know, the other veterans that care about you. Yeah. Um, so always reach out to somebody yeah. you know what i mean well you're doing something pretty proactive with alpha elite performance and we're going to talk about that in the next segment we're going to go to a break in just a minute and uh, i'm happy to connect with you in the way that we have over the last couple of years and and i believe in what you're doing and i think what you're doing is helping a ton of people and and going even further with uh the um, alpha elite outdoors which mm -hmm. is your foundation yeah and, um, there's gaps that need to be filled yeah, and it's doing it's doing a great job. We're gonna talk about that when we come back. Um, that's that's the that's the heart and meat of the matter right there. And then we're gonna talk about how to fix this country a little bit as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, before we do that, let me make sure I'm in the right spot. Yep, Brandon's got me. Take your summer adventures to the next level with Bespoke Post to their new seasonal lineup of must-have box of awesome collections. Bespoke Post partners with small businesses and emerging brands to bring you the most unique goods every single month, no matter what you have going on this season. 
you can go into a box of awesome and they got you covered yeah, they got the camping gear they got the beach stuff travel stuff bar stuff you get to go in there you take a little quiz and um they're gonna help you customize the box you're gonna get every month but you do it at box of awesome.com and uh, I guarantee you're going to love the stuff that shows up. Each box is valued around $70, $75, but you're only going to pay a fraction of that price in your subscription. Plus, with each box of awesome, you're supporting small businesses, and 90% of everything that comes in your box of awesome is from small up-and-coming brands. It's uh, free to sign up. You can skip a month or cancel anytime. And I'll get you 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com, but enter the code WATCHCHAD at checkout. Go to boxofawesome.com. Watch Chad is the code. 20% off your first box. Boxofawesome.com. Code Watch Chad. We'll be right back. See, I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing right here. This is, this is kind of knocking down the fourth wall. See, I'm taking the label off of the bottled water. <laughs> We're not giving them free advertising, but I uh, I put my r Rally and Recover. Uh, orange Pineapple is the flavor I've got right here. This is from Alpha Elite Performance. This is going to sound like one big commercial, and you know why? Because it is. Um, I told Travis, I was like, dude, I want you to come on the show. I want to talk about Alpha Elite. Uh, AlphaElitePerformance.com. You got incredible supplements. Now, I'm a dude who struggled with weight my entire adult life because yeah, I'm a lazy person. Same here. <laughs> you know, I mean, dude, I, I was, a, I was an athlete through college and, 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 you know, as a young adult, then I got tired of it. I just burned out. It's like, I don't want to do it anymore. And then in my thirties, I was a gym rat and then I did all the bad stuff too. I mean, I was all, I was steroided up and all that kind sure, of stuff. Yeah. Then in my forties, I was like, huh, I just can't keep up with this battle. Right. Yeah. And I've tried supplements. I've tried all this different stuff, but the stuff that you have at Alpha Elite that just changed my life is your Green Beret nap time, nappy time. The sleep aid. The sleep aid. GBNT. GBNT. Yeah, it means Green Beret nap time. We would say that uh, as Green Berets. GBNT time. You know, <laughs> get a break. So, yeah, we made a sleep aid that's pretty phenomenal. Get you to REM sleep. REM sleep is where all the healing happens. Recovery happens. Graying of the hair slows down, things like that. Weight loss when you can get, you know, some yeah. good REM sleep. So, and it's it's been proven the special uh, warfare center schools has also really kind of fallen in love with that and allowed um, their guys to use it along with our uh, greens detox drink as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, GBT I've, sleep. I've turned is a ton of, of people on. I've talked about it. I even went to Facebook jail over a post about it. You did. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. They put because yeah. I, I took a picture of my dog sleeping next to the stuff. Right. Yeah. as a joke and they put me in facebook jail yeah facebook yeah yeah so it was a crazy deal but then you just came this one i've been sweating all morning yeah so you came out with a product and i lost a ton of weight a year and a half ago i think it was on your alpha fin yeah well let's you, be let's be real yeah none of these are, are there no magic pills no magic pills no magic whatsoever pills. And, and, it, and i always say that like people just understand that. yeah yeah no magic you pills. worked out you worked out but, right. but i quit drinking i got sleep yeah and i worked out yeah yeah. So Alpha Fen Ignite Black is our new one that mm -hmm. uh, we've replaced the old one with. Um, a lot of people really just wanted that thermogenic feeling. That people want to feel something working. You know, they'll say, "Well, this ain't working." Well, you know, first of all, you need to work out. It'll help speed up that weight loss that you want, um, and it is working because nothing that we make it hasn't been scientifically formulated with our formulations guy. Um, to not work it they they work um they're gonna speed your weight loss up quicker if you use them than if you didn't yeah but the new one will definitely get you sweating wow um yeah you that picture you well, sent you me this gave, morning. yeah you gave me you gave me a, I, a, a sample of the you're of my the, test dummy the test stuff yeah yeah was, like this was the prototype yep yeah and buddy because the stuff people are buying and they're getting in the bottle now it's, it's half that yeah yeah right yeah thank god yeah <laughs> Because I made a post about it. I took one this morning at like 6.30. I took one this morning. And normally when I'm coming into the studio, I know how much it's going to make me sweat. Yeah. And I just wouldn't do it. Yeah. And I don't do it every day. Right. I don't do it every day. There's no way. But this stuff, I mean, you feel like you've just been in the gym for an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. And try working out with it. I use yeah. the same one that you use, uh, but I use it when I work out. And yeah. so when it, by the time I leave our facility, uh, there is a puddle following yeah. me out the door. Uh, we now have a stack of towels for me to get into my truck. 
that I'm not allowed to sit on the leather, you know. But, you know, I made the post this morning, my sweaty ass, just driving in the truck. You know, I was driving and just the sweat beads on my arm and just my yeah. hair is all slicked back and yeah. stuff. What little bit I got left. And and I'm just and people are, you know, they comment. They're like, well, you could just work hard. You got to do that, too. Yeah, you have. You absolutely have to do that. There's no replacement for eating right and exercise. Right. Um, but another thing that's great about this new one is that. Uh, if you want to shed that water weight before, let's say a wedding, you've got those last few yeah. pounds, you know, like, and you want to look a little shredded, a little more cut up, toned up. It's great for losing that water weight. Yeah. Um, but again, if you work out and you eat right and you use our products, they will speed up the process in which you're, you know, trying to achieve. And then, of course, the when you do that, you're going to sweat a lot. That's why the rally and recover. Rally you got to you, you buy the bag of that, and you got the little packets. Now, I will say on this, and by the way, the the Alpha uh, Ignite Black. Yeah. Uh, not for the faint of heart. So I'm just telling you, you better be ready for what's coming. When Says you take it on it. the bottle, not for the weak. Yeah, and it's not—it's not going to speed your heart up. It's a no. thermogenic. It's not—it's yeah. not one of those deals. There's it's some gonna... energy, you know, properties in there, and and yeah. we use and just so everybody knows that we use three trademarked ingredients um, that have been studied and tested to uh, to to speed up yeah. weight loss, fat loss. Yeah. So it um, works. There's yeah. no question about it. Sure it does. And, and again, because I'm one of those guys. I retain water real easily, and yeah. that, so that helps me. But I drink a lot of water, too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't like water. Yeah. But that's another thing about this. Now, this stuff, you put a full packet in a bottle of water. you got to put it in a big bottle. So I, eight, I sample this. I mean, some people like it within eight. Like at the game last night, some of the, the really? people that we gave it to liked it in, that, in just eight ounces of water. They like that sweetness. Um, that's a lot of sweetness. It there. is, but you have to because it's very sulfury, you know, that you'll you'll taste the, the, the electrolytes that are in there. Yeah. It tastes horrible if you don't. Uh, yeah. but, so we designed this one with estrogen in, in a long word that I can't really pronounce. So we should. I've seen it to that word. FOS. I can't pronounce it either. Fructolugolago. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so it has <laughs> FOS in there. So a prebiotic and a ingredient to um, speed up absorption. Um, and a lot of the other ones out there don't have that. And as special operations guys, we use a lot of um, rehydration um, drinks. Yeah. ORS oral rehydration. Uh, back in the day, we used to call it saltpeter, and it tasted horrible. Horrible. And uh, we used to make jokes that, oh, they're making us drink this because they don't want us to have sex out in the field and stuff like that yeah. with, you know, if we run across girls or whatever. Uh, <laughs> just some weird shit. Just, we, we came with some dumb stuff. Um, but we came up with this hydration drink uh, called Rally and Recover, uh, one for extreme athletes if you're, or whatever, if you just need to rehydrate, or if you're hungover. Yeah. They're phenomenal for for when we introduced it in Vegas it's at the Green Beret. Incredible for the hangovers. So. Yeah, we introduced it in Vegas at the Green Beret reunion last year at Shot Show, and uh, it was a huge hit. Yeah. So uh, we we got on that as fast as we could. It took nine months to get it out, and everybody thinks we can just make this stuff and get now, it out next you, week. No, you and because because when you were doing the the other stuff, the Ignite, I was like, man, that, when's that stuff coming out? I want to try it. I want to try it. Yeah. And the beauty of what Alpha Elite Performance, what you guys are doing, is you make sure it's a good product. And it's a pretty product, and that matters to me because it's like I don't want some guy, you know, pulling some stuff out of the trunk of the car. I want right. to know that some care and some pursuit of excellence went into a product I'm putting in my body. So yeah. I know you're doing it with the packaging, you're doing it with the ingredients, you're yeah. testing this stuff. And so, you know, I've had people uh, over time who have said, "Why don't you start a supplement thing?" And I'm like, "Well, I'm not a supplement company guy." Yeah. Especially when a, my buddy Travis already has a supplement that yeah. I completely believe in 100 percent, and yeah. all the stuff that you have, I'm like, I, no sense in reinventing the wheel. So yeah. anyway, AlphaElitePerformance.com, and if you go there, use promo code Chad, save save 15 percent on it. Absolutely. So that's where the commercial came in right there. <laughs> but no, dude, it's phenomenal, and I appreciate it. But the big thing, and I say all that about the company because it's veteran owned, obviously. I love that you put the little army man and, you know. Every box gets an army man and a little card explaining that, you know, we have people deployed, yeah. you know, 24-7, 365 days a year. And we want everybody to remember that. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't realize that Green Berets, we are the biggest special operations out there. So we are at any one given time in 93 different countries is the last that I checked. Uh, we are always out there. Yeah, at um, any given time. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and that's just, and, the, and the beauty of it is you do that you run a business obviously it's your business but it, you also it helps fund a lot of other things that you're doing. We have given back to the Green Beret Foundation. You'll see that logo on on some of our bottles yeah. uh, on our GBNT Sleep is one. Um, but we also give back to our own uh, foundation. Um, real quick caveat to those little sure. army men. Uh, do apologize for those of you who have ever not received one of those. We get a lot of emails. Really? Yeah. I don't know my packaging uh, director back there. Uh, 
<laughs> you know, occasionally misses. It's a good way to throw your wife under the bus. Okay, I, well, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. So people get pretty upset when they don't get one, and like, can you please send me a you know toy really? soldier that I didn't get because I have like a whole platoon on I, my computer. Yeah, I've got a collection. <laughs> yeah, of the stuff you've sent me over the years, I've got a collection of those army men, and I always like I never throw them away. Like for me, I like to put them up on the shelf, and it just reminds me to think about it pray about it remember these guys yeah. and, and gals that are that are out there and it's a cool reminder dude it's and they're made in america reminder. we only buy the ones from timmy toy soldiers which they've been yeah. around since i think world war ii or before yeah um so yeah we make sure that everybody gets one of those that's cool stuff and and you guys you uh we'll talk about in the next segment we can just expand out about the uh what you're doing with alpha elite outdoors you just got back from africa we'll talk about that so don't yeah. bring it up yet but um just doing some cool stuff out there and at the same time i mean we're getting bombarded with garbage. I mean, political garbage, cultural garbage, but also the food we're eating. And the, I mean, I said to CJ last night, I said, she, she's like, we got to lose some weight. And I'm like, well, you look great. That's because that, that's the right thing you say when right. a girl says that. Absolutely. Um, but I'm like, I, I'm definitely at that point where I, I need to drop about 20 pounds here. And so I'm like, but they're trying to kill us. They're using the food to kill us. Yeah. They want it. They want us depopulated, Travis. Right. Man. It's bad. We're in bad shape. I agree. I agree. I think progressivism is uh, – I mean, they are hell-bent on the destruction of America and destroying the institutions in which our founders yeah. created this nation on, yeah. um, from from defunding the police to uh, ending cash bail to making fake meats and pushing this whole, you know, eat fake meat agenda Synthetic bull crap. Bugs. Yeah, to Yeah, to holy crap, everybody drive an electric car. Well, not only that, the diesel pr gas prices come down, but diesel prices haven't. But then you can't transport food. And So my philosophy on the gas prices are coming down right now, but I think they're going to go back up after November. 1,000%. All of the, yeah, I, heard, I listened to some joker on Fox News yesterday who uh, was debating another gal, and he was like, you can't, I mean, you, there's no argument. Gas, are gas prices are coming down, and it's going to be great, and they're doing it for the vote. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things that they're doing for the vote, yeah. and as soon as if they if they get what they want, then stuff's going to go back yeah. to normal. Uh, it's just I think it's just going to be hell for the next two years anyway. But more to talk about on that. Hey, uh, let me remind you. I don't know why you get life insurance. You're going to pay hundreds of dollars, you know, a year, thousands of dollars, to protect your homes, your cars, even your phones. But too many of us aren't taking the steps to protect your family's finances mortgage payments, private student loans, other types of debt don't just disappear if something happens to you. A life insurance policy can provide your loved ones with a financial cushion they can use to cover those costs, and it can provide you with peace of mind that even in a worst-case scenario, they'll be protected. Um, you think you have enough coverage through work? Listen, having life insurance through your job may not be enough. You lose that job, you lose the insurance. Most people need up to 10 times more coverage anyway to properly provide for their families. And... Uh, Coverage through work isn't portable. If you leave it, go somewhere else, doesn't go with you. So um, you're going to need it. Uh, I want you to get covered right now. Inflation's driving up prices for just about everything lately, but life insurance rates are actually down from this time last year. And since life insurance typically gets more expensive as you age, that means now is a great time to buy. If you're worried about price, by making it easy to compare your options from top companies, Policy Genius can help you make sure you're not paying a cent more then you have to for the coverage you need. Policy Genius is an insurance marketplace that's going to make it easy to compare quotes from top companies like AIG, Prudential, and all in one place. You're going to find your lowest price on life insurance. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. They got options that start at just $17 a month for $500,000 worth of coverage. So I want you to click in the link in our description of the show or go over to policygenius.com slash Chad to get personalized quotes in minutes and find the right policy for your needs. Policygenius.com slash Chad. Get those free life insurance quotes. And by the way, they're not going to share your information, so you're safe there. See how much you can save. Policygenius.com slash Chad. We'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back. Let me put a pause in the conversation. It's that time in the show where I try to wax eloquent. Do you all remember when that crazy writer back in the 40s wrote a book about the world being under constant observation by Big Brother? His name was George Orwell, and the book was called 1984. Just the 
silliest little science fiction thing you could imagine where everywhere you went you were on camera and someone might or might not be assessing your every move to see what you were up to and because you never knew for sure you had pretty much better be towing the party line at all times now it's a goofy image of the future right except for the whole part where it's not at all uh london uh coincidentally the city in which that famous and prescient novel is set is already famous for being the most surveilled city in the world and they're installing millions more cameras as we speak that's millions with an m folks now ostensibly this is to lower the crime rate and hey it probably will do that but maybe not in the way that people uh, living there are going to like long term now on top of the fact that they'll pretty much be watching every square foot of london they're also equipped with facial recognition software. Now, on the surface, that might not sound like too bad of a thing, but let's uh, poke our stick a little further into this giant turd, shall we? These cameras and the technology driving them come from, wait for it, China, where they were developed to help the Chinese government sort out, can you guess, Uyghur Muslims. That's right, Uyghurs, that the uh, commies have been committing human rights violations toward before and ever since. Uh, I hope I'm being clear enough for you right now. These things were designed from the very get-go to trample hard on people's freedoms. And now London is just eating them up like candy from the back of a stranger's van and placing them here, there, and everywhere all over the city. The facial recognition tech in these cameras is so good, it's been used for so much bad that they're actually banned in the United States, at least for now. I want to go back to Orwell for a minute. If you've never read 1984, you need to. In fact, I just reread it a couple of weeks ago. Um, and you need to probably read it as often as you read your Bible, quite honestly. Do it once or twice a year because we're living it, folks. And I don't just mean the cameras. That's incredibly dangerous. And it's a big part of the story in the book, but it's not the biggest or most important part. Just like these cameras going up all over London isn't the biggest or most important part either. Because you and millions like you might say, well, if I'm not doing anything wrong, I hear this all the damn time. If I'm not doing anything wrong, I'm not the one who has to be afraid of the cameras. Well, that'd be where you're wrong. What do I always say about the left in this country, which is driven by the same ideology as the left in all the other countries? They seek to subvert the dominant paradigm. You can say that with me at this point. Now, the concept behind progressivism is constant change towards a utopia that, despite their best efforts, is never any closer than just over the horizon. And if change is the one law in the physics of your universe, then what happens to the person who doesn't have to worry about the cameras because he never does anything wrong? So I want you to hear me when I say this because this is the most important part. What happens is that the definition of doing things wrong, it changes. What wasn't an infraction or an all-out crime before will become these things just as a consequence of forced progress, which rolls over the people it touches like a tank. Now, the freedom of mankind is fragile, folks. It tears easily, and it can be washed away in an instant or eroded away like sand on a seashore over time. And it's our job as free men and women to do everything we can do to keep that from happening. Travis, I think we're living in scary times like i'm 49 years old i'm 49 years old i never would have thought this is where we'd be you know, just even in the last 20 25 years i never thought this was where we would be agreed yeah i mean yeah. what's your assessment of what's going on in terms of in terms of the politics the culture i mean insanity is the rule of the day in my opinion it's just it, people the logic is crazy yeah no it absolutely is and i think uh to be as elementary as i can uh so everybody can understand is that the the way that this country was founded by our forefathers is just being attacked and and I I mean I don't know how to say it more than that just progressing progressives like I said a second ago uh, you know are attacking the institution on which this country was founded on yeah um, with uh, you know defunding the police uh, which I think they're now starting to see though is kind of the wrong step you know move so they're, they're going back to okay well now we got it and everybody knew that they calling them idiots and, and they had to learn the hard way to no cash bail some some places are like ah crap this is you know not working right um i i can't wrap my brain around it i don't understand it uh i know that uh to again to to make it as easy as possible is that it's uh it's extremely dangerous it's destroying this un- our great nation yeah uh and i mean where do we go from here? That's it, it. 
It ain't going to be good. And, and look, you lived in California for a while. You're a Texas guy. You're back in Texas now. Yeah, yeah. You're born in Texas, but you spent a little time. You came back to Texas from California. Yeah, but I lived in, uh, so as a Green Beret, I lived in Navy SEAL land down there in Coronado. So yeah. I was around a lot of like-minded individuals um, who think the same way that you and I do. Um, but I also, you know, I'm going to call out conservatives. I can't stand um, progressives. Uh, I have some Democratic friends uh, that are starting to wake up. Yeah, um, me too considerable amount of them actually um, but they're allowing they are allowing through just pure ignorance the the far left to continue doing what they're doing yeah and they're winning they're more vocal um they're violent i mean the riots you know but the riots were peaceful you know <laughs> mostly peaceful yeah right but they're winning and i'm going to call out conservatives we talk such a big game right but i mean i'm not going to say that we're a bunch of pussies but Jesus. we're a bunch of pussies we talk, but but we're also at work most of the time. We don't have time to write. <laughs> you know what I mean? We have families that we have to take care of and yeah. jobs that we have. A majority of them who are uneducated are out there not working and don't have families to take care of. And yeah. it just brainwashes all get out listening to a lot of that far left bull crap yeah. um, that you see on some of those other networks that are just garbage. Uh, but yeah, where do we go? You know, uh, when, did, when does it come to a head? Um, and it really cracks me up is that I have a lot of military friends who think that you and I, the same way that you and I do that are still active duty, mm -hmm. but they're governed, you know, and they're, they're commander yeah. in chief who is, who's obviously, uh, hell bent on destroying this country. They have their hands tied, yeah. you know, and a majority of them want the hell out. Um, they're just like, I've got, you know, all my guy, my buddies are senior leaders now that are, cannot wait for. And you, you know, we were, we were talking one day at, out on the lake and, it make the joke about oh yeah I dropped all my guns i lost all my guns in the lake and you're like i didn't lose mine they're here come get them yeah yeah you want to come get them you come get them uh because i wholeheartedly That's the attitude you gotta have yeah absolutely i wholeheartedly believe in the second amendment and in my rights to own uh said guns yeah. <laughs> and weapons yeah um yeah, don't don't ever make those jokes about losing your guns and things like that. You own those guns. You have that right yeah. to own those weapons, uh, to defend yourself from your government. You know, yeah, go hunting if you want, but those are there to defend yourself from a tyrannical government. And and this one is is borderline teetering, uh, very close. Yeah, tyrannical. So, um, you know, we're not Europe. Uh, we are America. We were built the way that we were for a reason. And uh, we need to we need to keep that. Uh, yeah. If you want to be in a European country, then freaking get in your go to car, Europe. drive. Yeah, go to Europe. Uh, it, it, drive to the airport and fly there, uh, or swim. Please swim. <laughs> um, Stick around. They're going to build some trains to there somewhere. Something you know, electric yeah. trains. Um, but people got to quit talking the mad game and uh, and start voting. And and it's all about voting. But voting's not working either. So well, I don't know why I just said that. Um, <laughs> what what do we do you know where does this come to an end when does it yeah. boil over you know you hear a lot of people talk about civil war nobody wants a civil war you know we're all americans um the 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 insurrection bull crap that that uh, they they keep throwing out there uh i know people that were there and it's not at all uh how right. it's made out to be you know right um I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm fed up. And, and, and if it ever did come to blows, you know, I played hockey. I'm ready for some fisticuffs, <laughs> you know. I, I'm all about whooping up on some leftist progressives because they they, uh, they talk a big game. But and I know. Regardless of who it is, I'm sick of big government. I don't care what label you wear. Yeah. R.D., liberal, yeah. progressive, I, big government. If you're for that, I'm against it. So, yeah. Anyway. Makes no sense. Uh, all right. We got one more break. Uh, we have been brainwashed into believing our only way to grow our money for retirement is to risk it in the stock market. That's not true. You can reach your financial goals and dreams without taking any unnecessary risk. I mean, do you really control your retirement money? I spent some time on the phone with some great folks the other day, and I want to tell you about them. If you got a 401k or IRA or a similar retirement plan, the government controls it. They decide how much you can borrow, when you got to pay it back. You'll owe taxes, uh, penalties for taking it out too soon or, or, you know, waiting too long, even though it's your money. Now, thanks to our skyrocketing, skyrocketing national debt in a Congress that continues to spend like a drunken sailor who, who knows how much you're going to have to pay in taxes during a retirement that could last 30 years. Here's the folks to talk to. Bank on yourself. 
incredible company. They are a better way to grow and protect your hard-earned money. This retirement plan alternative has never had a losing year in over 160 years. Guaranteed predictable growth and retirement income with no luck, skill, or guesswork required. Your plan doesn't go backward when the markets tumble. Both your principal and growth are locked in. Tax-free retirement income. You'll know what your tax rate will be in retirement. Zero under current tax law, which protects you from the coming tax tsunami. Peace of mind. Perhaps the best reason of all, you're going to know the minimum guaranteed value of your retirement savings on the day you plan to tap into them and at every point along the way. You can get a free report with all the details on how the Bank on Yourself strategy adds guarantees, predictability, and control to your financial plan. Just go to bankonyourself.com slash Chad. And by the way, the guy that started 401ks that invented it, he uses Bank on Yourself. That's bankonyourself.com slash Chad. We'll be right back. Oh, boy, howdy. Did you see that story? Texas home invasion, uh, 17-year-old. There was three guys that came in, home invasion. 17-year-old grabbed a shotgun, double-barrel shotgun. And uh, one guy got away, which means you need we need to invent a triple-barrel shotgun is what we need. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but he killed two of them. Uh, this was Harris County. This is down there close to where yeah. we're at. Yep. We're just north of there in Montgomery County. Um. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was an adult female, 12 year old boy, two 17 year old males, and he grabbed a shotgun. But you know what? The media is dead silent on that deal. They don't talk about that. Yeah. Anytime you defend yourself uh, yeah. the correct way, the legal way, they're not going to talk about it, you know? But, uh, you know, if it were a, a white male with an AR 15 that walked into a Walmart. Yeah. Walked into a Walmart, they're all over it, yeah. you know? And it was race baited and all that good shit. Yeah. So, uh, you, you, uh, <laughs> How do you prepare? Like, how do you prepare your house? Like, if you're sitting in the, if you're sitting in the living room, like me, people make fun of me because it's like I have a gun within grabbing distance pretty much everywhere in my house. Sure, yeah, and that's great. First, I want to, I'm just going to throw this out there so everybody needs to know this. When people talk to Green Berets about guns, there are a lot of Green Berets that know a lot about guns, yeah, and ballistics and all that stuff when it comes to ammo. But majority of us, you just give us our primary and our secondary and tell us to go kill, and that's what we do. Yeah. Um, so when, when civilians talk to me about guns, they usually know a hell of a lot more about it than I do. Yeah. Now, tactics and technique is different. Um, but the way that I set up my house, I mean, I I know everywhere angle in my house, first floor, second floor, uh, to include if I were to put out sector stakes of fire, you know, in a support of a fire system or whatever, uh, I've been on my, my, my upper level looking out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you, yeah, I mean, we've got guns throughout the house as well. Um, I mean, I know where I'm going to go. See, it's funny you say that. My buddy uh, uh, and former Navy SEAL Clint Emerson, uh, Clint's told me numerous times, he's like, I'm not a gun guy. I mean, he probably knows more about He's forgotten more about guns yeah. than I'll ever know. But he's like, I'm not a gun guy. I'm a blade guy. And I'm like, that scares the shit out of me. Actually. Right, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. See, I'm not I mean, a blade they, guy, but yeah. They used to drop Clint off on the beach in his underwear and a knife in his teeth, and he'd just right. go kill whoever it was. And Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not a, a blade guy. I am a gun guy, but I buy them and I use them. But I don't study them. I don't study, you know, right. weaponry. I was a, a medic and a, and a communication specialist as a Green Beret. There is a job as a Green Beret called 18 Bravo, which is a weapon dude. And that's the guy that I relied on for, yeah. you know, making sure stuff worked. Um, and, you know, I made sure my own gun worked as well. But, uh, but yeah, I've got I've, when, it, when it comes to the defense of my property in my house uh, well, I mean, and my just car. The lawlessness is getting crazy. It is. It absolutely you is. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's, people, they, they, they're operating with impunity because they don't, there's no consequences to it anymore. Yeah. But, you know? but people need to think more than just the lawlessness. Start thinking about big government, too, talking about wanting to come take 100%. your guns, you know? Um, that again, that Second Amendment is there to protect yourself from tyrannical government, and they're, yeah. they're, they're borderline teetering on that bull crap. Um, but I think they're just going to make things more expensive uh, so people can't afford to buy them. You just got but, back from Africa. You were in Botswana. Uh, Namibia. Namibia. Yep. I, I keep Same saying place. Botswana. You know, NB, whatever. It all runs together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're still guy spent so much time in Africa, but I've never been to Namibia or Botswana, so I don't know why I'm confusing <laughs> the two. Um, what were you doing over there? Uh, you know, I did a little hunting. I was asked to come over there and just kind of assess a uh, um, uh, an anti-poaching unit and kind of give some um, 
of added value, but those guys are doing a really. They good had it job. nailed down, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just a, a good group of, of guys. Uh, but I own or started AEPoutdoors.com, which is a nonprofit for Alpha Leaf Performance. Uh, we take veterans on uh, extreme adrenaline type uh, outdoor adventures. Um, we went down to Cabo, things like that. Did some sport fishing. Um, recently just did some heli hog hunting down in Temple, Texas with Last Shadow, great company. Uh, but I was over in Africa uh, and kind of solidified a couple of amazing hunts that we're going to do for some veterans, a $10,000 and a $20,000 hunt that we need to get hot and heavy and raising money for. So AEPoutdoors.com Com. is yeah. where people, if you want to get involved in that and you want to help fund some of that, that is a good place and you know it's going to go to Travis and what he's doing and, and he's going to put me on the board. I'm holding him to that. He is on the board. You are on the board. I'm and on it, the but, board of directors. But just so you know, that money doesn't I'm, go to me. 100% yeah. of what well, we it goes, raise. But it goes to you, the one who are going to make sure that it's directed yeah. in the right yep. places. And yeah. That's what I mean by that. And so, our board members. Yeah. So. Yeah, but uh, yeah, 100 percent that goes back to the. Veterans. I haven't gotten the Yellowstone stamp on my chest or anything. I haven't been branded, but I'm I'm on the board. It's coming. It's yeah. coming. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we're it's going to be awesome. We're going to go to Namibia, and two guys or, or gals. Uh, that's the hard part. It's an extremely deserving hunt, or it's an amazing hunt for an extremely deserving veteran. Uh, you know, they're going to get to to hunt and take five to, to eight animals, uh, and taxidermy uh, will be kind of added into that as well. Awesome. So come home with you know some african type animals so I, I went into my garage i was i was on the road we did some shows um and i came back they had delivered my nil guy nice and such a big animal big, yes beautiful I, animal. I still want to to get a nil guy for them and so the mount the shoulder mount showed up and so i got there yesterday it was sunday i opened the box up and and you know it's an, it's an expensive process to yeah. go hunt it to taxidermy get the meat processed yeah. all this stuff and I looked in that box, and it was so beautiful. And I said, "This was worth every penny." Yeah, absolutely. So, what that does for a veteran, a, just a deserving person to go out there and get rewarded with something that's yeah, so, I I can't once say that in a life kind of thing. It, no, it absolutely is. And when I was over there, I did not expect to hunt, but the owner of this facility of the the hunting lodge there, um, he he said, "Hey, do you want to go hunt?" And I'm like, "Sure." And I expected to pay for every right, you know, every cent of, of what I was hunting. But I got a warthog and a and an impala and two beautiful animals that uh you know we got to stalk and then track got surrounded by elephants um you know you can you almost see that died. i mean i wouldn't say i almost died but i was a little nervous so uh, especially when the <laughs> my guide is I, i'm looking at this elephant flaring her 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 ears and i was like what happens if she charges He's like it's over it's over it's, it's done, done buddy so um but yeah <laughs> alpha aep outdoors.com uh, that is the uh, non-profit and 100% of that goes back to the veterans and their outdoor experience. And that's that gap that I was trying to tell you yeah. that we try to fill is that that fellowship that we that I've seen and witnessed. Um, it's healing for some of these guys. The hunt is great. The adrenaline is great. Being with other veterans is great. And, and, and then that fellowship where they get to talk and talk about things that they can't talk about in front of their spouse or their buddies. Yeah. Uh, it's healing. And, and, and I had a gal last week uh, tell me that she was close to committing suicide. Uh, but we went on this heli hog hunt, and she got to hang out the side that's of a helicopter, awesome. and uh, and she was pretty stoked. And, and and that just that's that's where it's at is is building that community. She now has three new veteran friends that she can reach out to, uh, and 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 it's it's healing and it's moving. And that's why I started this uh, nonprofit. And I didn't want to see my money going to the IRS like it was. Heck yeah. Uh, so why not put it back into our veteran community and, and helping these guys? I love it. It's yeah. a good cause. Hang tight. We'll be right back. Travis Wilson, Alpha Elite Performance. We love you. God bless you. See you tomorrow night. Bye.